Is it when a car suddenly veers right around a curve, our bodies seem to lean in the opposite direction. Or when the car suddenly stops, our bodies keep going. Thank goodness for seat belts. Why does this happen? In a previous video, we learned how things move. Now let's head full throttle into Sir Isaac Newton's three laws of motion. That will help us understand why things move. Sir Isaac Newton was born in England in 1642. He's considered one of the most influential physicists of all time. He developed these three laws of motion. Engineers need to know these laws to design better safety features in cars. For example, animators and game designers need to know these laws to draw believable cartoons in better games. And you do not want an engineer to build a rocket to launch into space without knowing about Newton's three laws of motion. Before we launch into those three laws, let me explain a little about forces, because forces are why things move. Say, for example, I push Summer here. She moves. I can pull her, too. <laughs> forces like a push or a pull can cause us to move. Force is a vector quantity. That means it has magnitude and direction. OK, so we're going to arm wrestle now. OK, we're going to arm wrestle. It's a great way to show you the difference between balanced and unbalanced forces. If there's an equal push and pull, that's balanced. The forces cancel each other out. You push on my arm, I push on hers. With the same force, there's no movement. That's balanced. If one is greater than the other, Summer's arm pushes more than my arm does, the forces are unbalanced, the object accelerates in the direction of the net force, and Summer wins. Same in a tug of war. If both sides are pulling with equal force, there's no movement. That's balanced. But if one side pulls harder, it's unbalanced, which means there's a greater force on one side than the other. The difference between the greater and weaker force is the net force. I win. Now that you know about balanced and unbalanced forces, let's speed right into Newton's first law of motion. It states, any object at rest will remain at rest unless there's an external unbalanced force that acts on it. In this case, my car is stopped. There are forces acting on me, but they're balanced. That's why I'm not moving. We'll explain more about those forces a little later. Now, once the car takes off, I feel like I'm pinned to the back of my seat because my body at rest wants to stay at rest and resists that forward motion. Newton's first law goes on to say that once an object is in motion, it will remain in motion and will move in a straight line unless there is an external unbalanced force acting on that object. Newton calls this the law of inertia. Inertia is an object's resistance to change. So hit the brakes, and my body wants to keep going forward. And the more massive the object, the more inertia it has, and the more resistance to change. Let's look at an example. What do you think will happen when a larger person and a smaller person push each other while both are on skateboards? Who moves more? The larger person hardly moves compared to the smaller person. Why is that? Because the larger person has more inertia. He's more resistant to moving. On the other hand, the smaller person is less likely to stay at rest because he has less inertia and is less resistant to change, so he moves more. So remember, objects at rest stay at rest, and objects in motion stay in motion because of inertia, which means they're resistant to the forces acting on them. OK, so let's say you're in deep space, and there are no forces like friction or gravity acting on an object, like this bicycle wheel. How long do you think this wheel will spin? It will spin forever at a constant velocity because of inertia and because there are no outside forces causing it to stop. Which brings us to Newton's second law. Remember these three words, mass, force, acceleration. How do these three variables interact? Let's use this truck. If I pull the truck, it accelerates. If I pull the truck with twice the amount of force, it will accelerate twice as much. Because force and acceleration are proportional to each other, 
If you increase the force, then you increase acceleration. The acceleration is always in the direction of the net force. The net force is moving the truck to the right, causing it to also accelerate to the right. Okay, let's double the mass of the truck by adding this weight. How does that affect acceleration? When I double the weight of the truck and pull it with the same amount of force, it will accelerate half as much. Given the same amount of force, the heavier truck accelerates slower. Now, mass and acceleration are inversely proportional given the same amount of force. You increase the mass and decrease the acceleration when the force stays the same. Okay, here's something about forces you should know. When forces acting on an object are balanced, the object will remain at rest or it will move at a constant velocity. When forces acting on an object are unbalanced, the object will accelerate or decelerate. So when I hit the gas on the car, the force from the tires pushes on the track, causing an unbalanced force on the cart, which causes the cart to accelerate. If the cart is already moving and I push on the gas just enough to move at a constant velocity, then all the forces on the cart are balanced. Forces that could slow the cart include things like air resistance, friction between the tires and the track, along with the friction of all the moving parts of the cart's engine and drivetrain. So if I give it just enough gas to counter those forces, I'll move at a constant velocity because the forces are balanced. If the cart is at rest, then all of the forces acting on it are balanced. So remember, net force equals mass times acceleration, written F sub net equals small m times small a. Okay, so let's move on to Newton's third law of motion, which states, for every action, there's an equal yet opposite reaction. That means there are forces at work all around us that we often don't even think about and may even seem counterintuitive. Newton realized that forces work opposite of each other. For example, I walk and my foot pushes on the sidewalk. The sidewalk is pushing back up on my foot. If the sidewalk didn't push back on my foot, my foot would go right through the sidewalk. The tires on this go-kart push against the track at the same time the track pushes against the tires, causing it to move forward. These examples are called action-reaction pairs. Anytime an object exerts a force on another object, there is a force equal in magnitude, yet opposite in direction, back onto the original object. You'll find there's still a lot we're learning every day, and a lot still yet to explore. So get to know Newton's three laws, because they set in motion all kinds of discoveries, like making safer, faster, and more efficient vehicles. Take some time to really understand these three concepts. Inertia, net force equals mass times acceleration, and action-reaction pairs. It will definitely help you now and on down the road. And that's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you guys next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.